We are from heaven. Before we ever got into this body, we existed as a spirit. <laughs> wow. Why does anybody watch our videos? I don't know. Going to church is good, but it's not enough. Not enough. Bible study, oh, it's great, but it's not enough. We're done here. She's got a microphone two inches from her mouth. Please stop yelling. When you go to heaven, you're going to be here. like, hey, everybody. <laughs> Remember me? Remember me? We huh? had that YouTube channel. <laughs> oh, Lord, open our eyes so we can see you more. How about if you just read the Bible where God promised to already be? How about if you did that instead of twisting the Bible and right. talking about your own ideas? How about that, right. Priscilla? All up on you. Oh, Set yeah. your heart, girl, for his purposes. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Hit, Hit the, the Bar. Bar. I'm Steve Kozar. Paulette Kozar. Ginger and Kiko. They are only in the show because we are desperate for views. Yes. And they're cute. They're super cute. And if we don't have them in the show, they'll bark at us and want our attention. They'll want our attention and they'll be clawing at the door. Yeah, so, so we're down in the basement. We're going to do a sermon review. Well, it's not really a sermon. I don't know what you call it when it's a women's conference, but it's basically a Speaker type. review. Yeah, it's a type of sermon. Conference review. You know what? I don't even like saying sermon. Well, I think it is inappropriate. It's a speech. It is a speech. Okay, so we recorded this on the first day of July. I put it up a few days later, and I got these three copyright notifications saying that we could not monetize this video because basically the content didn't belong to us. It belongs to Priscilla Shire, to Lisa Harper, and to TBN. So I didn't put the video up, and I decided to make this intro and to explain a few things, and then I will put the video up as it was, and I will fight this copyright infringement claim. But I do want to delve a little bit more deeply into what you just heard us say a moment ago. It's a speech. It is a speech. Lisa Harper is a professional storyteller and theological scholar and best-selling author. She has a speaking fee of $10,000 to $20,000 per speech or per event. I'm not sure. But this is what I found by just Googling her name and the words speaking fee. Now, here's an article I found from January of this year. The nine top Christian motivational speakers. And guess who number one is? Priscilla Shire. But we don't know how much she makes per speech because that information doesn't appear on any of the speaker agency websites that I looked at. I did find this one website that says she can earn anywhere from twenty to $50,000 per speaking engagement. And I believe that's correct. That sounds about right for somebody with her level of popularity. As a comparison, here's Beth Moore, who has fallen out of popularity with many mainstream evangelicals. Uh, she was, at least at some point, making twenty dollars to $30,000 per speaking engagement. Now, in contrast, Christine Kane, on two different speaker agency websites, show her speaking fee to be a very low five to $10,000 per engagement. But I think there might be a reason for this, and that is that Christine Kane appears to be deeply involved in the Hillsong scandal with the uh, various preachers going back and forth to each other's churches and getting speaking fees for all of their appearances. This is an article from the Christian Post. You can see Christine Kane is very closely tied to Bobby and Brian Houston. There has been a very serious whistleblower within the Hillsong organization who gave information to Andrew Wilkie, an independent member of the Australian Parliament. And Wilkie has made all of this information available to the public. Now, I'm going to put up a post here from Church Watch Central, and you can actually download many of the documents that are available to the public through this whistleblower. And here on Church Watch Central, they have Wilkie's speech that he gave to the government, and it's transcribed here word for word, and you can see all the tremendous amounts of money that were being spent on luxury items, all paid for by the general public who thought they were contributing to a church or to charitable events, when in fact this was a scheme for these public speakers to make themselves very, very rich. And Christine Kane appears to be right in the center of it all. One of the key aspects of the story is that in Australia, you don't have to pay income tax on honorariums, whereas you do if you get paid for an honorarium or a speaking fee in the United States. So it appears that Hillsong had created a system for pastors to make tax-free honorarium money or speaking fee money through their kind of secret organization. I'll be doing more videos on this topic in the future. I will also put links to these articles in this video. 
Okay, now let's get back to the video with Paulette and myself. A yeah. speech with their own interpretation of what words mean. So what we're going to do real, is... real words have real meaning, you can take meanings of words and make it whatever you want. Because we, we live in a subjective society now. Well, this is going to be Pris 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 Priscilla Shirer. Shire. <laughs> Priscilla Shire. Shire. That is a little Shirer. bit difficult to say. Shire. Now, uh, as opposed to some of the really, really horrendous sermon reviews, she will say some things that are... They're good. But we're also going to see where she goes way off track and she's going to mishandle a text, uh, especially in terms of using it as a prescriptive Instead text. Instead of descriptive. Yeah. Right. And she's specifically going to be talking about how to get the Holy Spirit to do stuff because he wants to do stuff, but he can't until you do stuff. Does that make sense? Not yeah, really? Not really, but <laughs> I think the text that she's using, I have one question. But we'll wait. We'll wait until it starts going. Okay. And then we call it hit the bar because we hit the space bar when we want to stop and evaluate. There is no alcohol involved. Speaker is doing not right now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's chocolates, chocolates, and I put them out of the package to put here because some people don't like the sound. And By the way, this, this less crunchy things for the dog. This one you got. Yeah, it's really good. I've it was on sale this. for two dollars and forty nine. I like cents. it even more now. Good. Okay, so. Um, one of the other things we got to do is shout out to all of our campuses all over the world. Hey, we're so excited to have you here at our YouTube campus. Whoa! <laughs> we're going to be talking about TBN. This is to be determined. <laughs> no, that, to, that doesn't even work. No, P, T, T, anyway. Terrible Broadcast Network. Okay, I want to just break in here and show you some of the uh, thumbnails for the many videos that they have on TBN. About six months, no, about three months ago, we were talking about um, Michael Todd and how he was the most popular pastor. He isn't anymore. You can see he's not featured nearly as much as he was before he had that huge Easter sermon or Easter play disaster. But Priscilla Shire, Joyce Meyer, Jonathan Kahn, T.D. Jakes, the heretic, and there's Lisa Harper, uh, a lot of really bad teachers on here. Some are worse than others, but I don't recommend TBN at all. Now, TBN thinks they're great. In fact, how great do they think they are? Well, let me show you something. Matthew Crouch took over from his father, Paul Crouch, who founded TBN, and he and his wife, Lori, make $1,218,672 per year, so they think they're pretty special. These are screenshots from ministrywatch.com, and they recommend that you don't send them any money at all. Terrible Broadcast Network. Oh. TBN is huge, and they have a huge Trinity influence. Trinity Broadcast. That's what it's supposed to be. Yes. And this is a uh, video where they took what they thought were the best parts of her speech, and then Lisa Harper, and then Christine Kane. Yeah. And we're, we're in gonna, for a treat. We're in for a real treat. We're going to focus on her first, Priscilla. But then we're going to do a little bit of Lisa Harper, and then there's something that Christine Kane says that is the same as what Mormons teach and Gnostic teachers. That's something. And we're going to call our dear friend Daryl Rayfelt, the actual scholar, who we call a virtual scholar yep. when we get him on the phone, and he's going to help us interpret kind of, some things. Well, kind of get through what what does the Bible really say? And and you might see me like catching them because they're kind of like going off the edge here. Because they see the treats. But we're, you know, trying to keep them calm. She Sorry. is. By the way, uh, since we last did one of these, Hi. she had cancer surgery. Yep. It took a big... <laughs> <laughs> She's doing really well. She is. She's your bossy self. Now, having the treats just sitting there on the counter is a bad idea. This well, is obviously not going to work. Well, we'll see. But... Um, She's attentive. So, so, yeah, the one tumor was removed because it was needed to be. Um, they're tiny ones, and it'll eventually kill her. We don't know how long she's got. We will show no pictures. No, we won't. It of, was of not pleasant the, to no, look at. But she's doing great. She's doing great. Um, you would never know she was sick. <laughs> Get back. And Kiko just enjoys watching her. He's just chilling out. He's chilling out. He's got a thing in his eye. Look at her. I know. He's yeah. gotta, we got to find a group for you him. Can't, she's going to be barking during our professional video. We are professional video makers. This is the wrong time of barking, isn't it? <laughs> hey, we haven't had the woman speaking yet. Yeah. We will get them to howl at the end. We will get them to howl at the end. We will get them to howl at the end. Let's see if, if it's out of sight. 
They're probably smelling that stuff. It stinks. Yeah, it stinks. It's called Duck Duck Goose. Heaven. What does that mean? Yeah, what does what that does mean? What does it mean that I have access to things from my heavenly kingdom here on earth? That this is just the in intro. That is chaotic. I can still have peace. In a world that is full of anger, I can still have joy. I gotta make sure this is loud enough. Today, that it was Mary and Joseph who did not have what everybody had, but they had what everybody else didn't have. And so they come into the building. Let's do that again. The text speaks to you today that it was Mary and Joseph who did not have what everybody had. But they had what everybody else didn't have. The have and have nots. <laughs> so I guess she's trying to say they were poor, they mm. were not important, they weren't powerful. Yeah, I just read that they, yeah, when they brought um, Jesus to the but temple. But they had. The Son of God. Else had. Well, it's like, okay, but is she going to say that's kind of us too? We'll find out. Yeah. And so they come into the building. Nobody recognizes that Jesus has arrived. This is one of the few moments where she's not yelling. I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised by this, but it will soon end. Except one person. Luke writes at the top of the passage. He writes, and behold. Somebody say behold. No. no. Come on, y'all say behold. No. no be a, you Anytime you all? an author in the text writes that word, it isn't. A throwaway word. It isn't something that you just need to skip or skim over quickly. Anytime you read behold in the text, the author's trying to tell you, lean in. This is when the author wants you to open up your eyes and sit up straight because there's somebody he wants you to meet. He says, behold, there was a man. Is this the one that was the actress? Well, she considers herself an actress now. She went and was at a Bible study in college and she... But wasn't she in a movie? Yeah, that was that prayer one. Okay. You know, where she goes in the closet and uh -huh. <laughs> puts pictures up or something. I never saw it. But be, I'm asking because her movements and her gestures are... Remember, she went to the Zig Ziglar School of Speaking. Oh. When is she that was still why in college. her performance is... That's why she is so animated in her speaking. You're not a person unless you're acting. Yeah. Name Simeon. And when no one else recognized the presence of God, when God came near, there was one guy who did. And if in this room today, there are only going to be a handful of us who actually have an encounter with God. I'm talking about where we hear his voice, when we, our hearts are set aflame by the Holy Spirit. What does all that mean? Okay, when you, hear, when you hear God... Okay, when we open scripture, are we hearing from God? That's where we hear God. That's right. With and complete certainty. That With complete certainty. As opposed to, I think he said this, and, and he I'm, might have said that. And I'm pure enough to know that God has told me these things. Yeah. Nobody's pure like that. Yeah. Spirit, when, you, when we get some, some uh, direction for the purpose that he has for our life, that there are going to be a whole lot of us who have an experience today, but only a few that actually encounter the living God that I don't know about you, but if there's only going to be a few, I want to be one of them. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, me too. And Luke says, don't leave me out. Yeah. Yeah. There's one guy that's going to show you how to have your eyes open so that you... Okay, so Luke's going to show us how... To have our eyes open. Have our eyes open by by this passage is about us okay. getting our eyes open. Question. Yes, ma'am. I I I would like to actually read. May I read the true gospel in an, I mean just that that text? I want to read it. I have it right here. That's Luke two twenty five. I have it too. I know. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And then 26, and it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. 27, and he came in the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought Jesus, brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, now Lord, th thou dost, I'm reading from NASB, Thou dost let my thy bondservant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Do you remember we sang that? Yes, I do. Yeah. And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. 
And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rise of many in Israel and for a sign to be opposed. Right? And to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Which is a quote from... Uh, yeah, Isaiah. So, so what do you think Simeon would say about her interpretation of how the Spirit of God was on him? What was his role in this whole thing? This what would a, he say? I mean, the... I, he would be appalled. That's all I'm saying. What she's going to go through? Yeah, we got to get there first to, I know, to I'm make just, that point. I am appalled. Because she's turning this into a text that's going to back up what she was planning on saying all along. Right. The text in and of itself doesn't say any of the things that she's going to be referring to. You aren't just in the religious place, but so that you encounter a holy living God. So she's talking about the women are supposed to encounter, they're supposed to have an encounter with God. Mm -hmm. Most of them won't, but if there's only a few... Handful. She wants to be one of them. Yeah. What does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. Right. It's something that will make her and people be who agree elevated. with her be elevated or to sound, you know, like they're really serious about their faith. Yeah, and, and they're going to go somewhere, if, and you're left out if you don't. Yeah, and... The, How many women have ever gone to a conference like that? <laughs> Hello? Every single one of them And then you're to so be a, depressed afterwards because you're not like them. Yeah. He says there's a man named Simeon. He's righteous, devout, and he's looking for the consolation of Israel. His eyes are open, peeled to the horizon, waiting for Jesus in whatever package he chooses to come. Waiting for an encounter with the, the long-awaited Messiah. And then he gives... Waiting for an encounter. This is one of the catchphrases of the, the kind of world we live in. Yeah. The charismatic world of having an encounter with God. Which is something that, if it was so important to have an encounter with God we would see that idea being repeated specifically in the instructions to the church. Mm-hmm. You would hear Paul saying to Timothy, now remember, get get your church to have an encounter. Make sure that the people in your congregation all have an individual encounter with God right. because that's really, really important. Right. If you're not having an encounter with you God... You don't have God. Yeah. You're there, missing out. But there's none of that. But this is so common that it's just assumed when, and of course, she's famous and these women probably came from great distances and, you know, oh, hired a lot of money ba- and babysitters. Get there. And Absolutely. Even some of them flew to this thing. They're just hanging on the th- every word that she's saying. This is the problem with celebrity preacher, speaker, right. celebrity, whatever you want to call famous it. people. That I believed opened up Simeon's eyes to catch sight of God, that will open up our eyes to catch sight of God. He says at the bottom of verse. 25, he says, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Luke says Simeon's eyes were open to catch sight of God because God's Spirit was on him. The Holy Spirit is the greatest gift you will ever receive this side of eternity. The moment you place faith in Jesus, the moment you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, I don't know if you knew it or not, but you received in that moment the greatest gift you will ever receive, the Holy Spirit of God. I don't know if you knew it or not. <laughs> so, so we watched this uh, last week, and we got to this part, and I said... I'm done. Well... <laughs> I mean, we turned it off. <laughs> no, no, what I said, we watched a little bit more. Yeah. I said how <clears throat> she's saying right here something that she will contradict just a moment later. So you get the Holy Spirit in entirety... Even if you don't know it, it's all there. The Holy Spirit's all there. Even if you don't know it, I don't know if you know it or not. And then she's going to go on to tell you how you got to get more of the things she just told you got you it. have in its okay, entirety. So you're ahead of her. And the Holy Spirit is not a ghost or a wind or a fire or a dove. He is often symbolized by those things, but y'all, they ain't who he is. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Trinity, but all of the fullness, all of the power, all of the authority, all of the greatness, all of the grandeur of God the Father is in the person of the Holy Spirit. Which means when you place faith in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit takes up residence in you, that now means that all of the power, all of the glory, all of the grandeur, all of the greatness of God the Father now lives on the inside of you. Wow. So you've That's got, a big tall order. So you've got all of that. I'm great. Well, I mean she's not she's not saying that, but she is saying that it you It resides have, in you. Yeah, but 
all the greatness what resides she's, What in she's going to say next is, you've got to do a bunch of stuff in order to make all those things do something. Well, then that's not the glory of God. If the glory of God and the power of God and all these things are already in you, and they're all just sitting there going, we're in you, but we can't do anything until you give us permission, until you release us, the Holy Spirit's inside of you going, hey, what about me? That's kind of the picture she's painting. Mm -hmm. I know she doesn't intend to. It's just, I'm trying to... Yeah, she take... does. I mean, she says you basically are powerless unless you do something. Well, and we'll find out. We're yeah, ahead we of her again. There. Ephesians chapter 1 says, the moment you believe, you receive the Holy Spirit with promise. You are not waiting on the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit right now. Okay. You did not receive the Holy Spirit in installment plans. But she's you going can't... to talk about how you need to do more to, to process the installment plan. Give away a person in parts. All of the Holy Spirit you ever going to get, you got the moment you got saved. Now we need to be filled by God's Spirit as we yield to His... Here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted, yeah. to, I wanted to make a joke that I decided would be best left... Unsaid. Unsaid. Unjoked. Yeah, but let's listen to that again. Oops. Sorry. Talk like Him and walk like Him and behave the moment you got saved. Now we need to be filled by God's Spirit as we yield to His conviction in our life in obedience as what is happening in us becomes an outward expression, as our behavior is modified, as we are sanctified. Somebody say sanctified. No, no, no. That means as we are molded into the image of Christ Jesus so that we start to think like him and talk like him and walk like him and behave like Jesus, Jesus behaved. We need to be filled by God's spirit. But when you got saved, listen to me, you received the Holy Spirit of God. God's spirit is in you. The benefit of this is all of the fruit of God's spirit is available to you. That means that, that there is gentleness that you don't have in your own natural ability for that person or that problem that now you are able to have that is beyond your own natural capacity because the Holy Spirit, what he does is help us to live beyond ourselves. When we've come to the end of our patience, you know with that one coworker, that one that if she says one more thing to you, you're going to knock her out, that one. The Holy Spirit is the one that gives you... Okay, I'm going to say it. <sighs> is she black? Is she white? I mean, come on, make up your mind, Priscilla. She does this where she goes into these little phrases where she sounds real Southern, you know, and then, but the rest of the time she's talking very articulate, like, you know, she's from Boston or something. It's like, well, just make up your mind. Part of the country are you from? But it's like she's switching. She's switching because she's a performer. She's a performer. And this is what we talk about with almost everybody we review. It's not bad for a pastor to be professional and to speak with clarity and to enunciate words and communicate. But mm -hmm. there's a point where you're like, no, this is way over the line into this performance thing where you're using different dialects and putting on a basically a little show, yeah. a little performance. Entertainment. Entertainment. You patience when your patience has long since run out. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives you self-discipline so that you have discipline in areas where you know left to your own natural desires and propensities you would not have discipline in that area of morality or that area of gluttony. You wouldn't have discipline. But now, because the Holy Spirit lives... She's talking to people in Arkansas, I think. So. Okay, gluttony, if you look at, like, <clears throat> the statistics of the United States, it's pretty bad. Oh, it's... Especially... Right. Don't go there. Yeah, in certain segments of American culture. We were told the diet soda will cancel out the sugar. The Holy Spirit gives you fruit so that you are able to have more than... So if you, if you, if you lack control of gluttony, mm -hmm. if you lack control of any of those forms of sin she's talking about or don't perform in those types of fruit of the spirit now granted i believe in the fruit of the spirit of course it's in scripture she doesn't read where it is in scripture um that's evident in our life and our walk with christ does that mean we're always living that way of course not do we struggle in this life of course we do so really what did jesus come for what did the holy spirit come for to seal us until we die and go to heaven that's our gift that is our gift. In the meantime, he's given us tools to work through our salvation, yes, to be sanctified and to go forward and to be able to experience patience, maybe where I didn't have it before, of course. So what's frustrating is 
something sounds so good because they're so true and then she throws in some little zingers that that bring you down a whole other path of the things that you have to do and then it becomes this burden on your shoulder and then you feel like okay you're the only one that's struggling with this because yeah. you know she's obviously met with god and and she's not gluttonous so i'm just saying i i just i'm this is a difficult one because like I said in the beginning, she's not saying things that are right. patently wrong. But that's the problem. I mean, deception is n not knowing you're being deceived. They're, They're, you have to be so careful on what you eat. Spiritually. The spiritually yeah. eat, yes. Well, and, and physically. Well, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to go outside and eat some, you know, any kind of grass that I want I'm to gonna, or mushrooms. I'm not going to have a stick of margarine. For, right. Yeah. Maybe a stick of butter, but not margarine. <laughs> <laughs> We're in Wisconsin. It's a dairy right. state. Um, I think a big <clears throat> issue that would explain this is that this is a... All law. Speech. Yes, that's a good point. There's no gospel here. Law means everything you have to do. And and so she's assuming that everybody already has all the gospel they you need, and that. what they really need is more law. Right. What you would have if left to your own. But you don't just get his fruit, you get his gifts. The Holy Spirit gives you gifts through which you can edify the body of Christ. He turns what would have maybe possibly been just a talent into a gift that actually causes what you do or what you craft to actually get to the hearts of the people that you were singing to or speaking to or dancing for or writing to. Those people now don't just... Notice the categories? Dancing. The, well, it was all the Singing. stuff that you talk about with women Performing. ministries. Yes. You know, you can't just be a normal housewife or right. a normal whatever. That's a good point. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted with this little one. You have to be an author. You have to be a right. speaker. You a, have to be a, a singer, musician. a dancer. you got to write new songs that no one's ever heard. I mean, all those things are fine, but most people... You're talking honestly, to average people. And, and what, there's nothing wrong with average. I've well, come to and embrace average. Even the word average is, is deceptive because it implies that you're less than you're less than you could be. Right. And it's true that we should try to reach our potential. And if we have abilities and talents, we should try to utilize those things. We should be good stewards of those things. So again, there's there's some truth to everything she's saying here. Right. It's just the emphasis is all on well, okay. Even now, this idea that she's already what is she in uh seven minutes? Well, there was an intro, so this is maybe about five minutes. She's already talking about all the things that you should be doing to become more prominent and to be more, uh, more not just used by God, but more of a kind of like her sort Performer. of person who is being mm -hmm. used by God. When it, it all started with Simeon, who <laughs> was pointing to Christ. Right. And that's the importance. It was Christ. It, that's what he saw. And he was given that gift from God that he would see the Savior before he died. That's why he was looking. And mm -hmm. here he was. How old? Incredibly old. I don't know, 80s or something? Something. And he sees the salvation of the world. Okay, so that was... How do we say it? When, when, when things are descriptive, it's describing what's going on during mm -hmm. that time. We're and, not Simeon. And what is that supposed to prove? That's supposed it's, to prove the fulfillment of God's word. Right. And point to the sal the Savior of the world, what not to what how God's going to be on all of us, because Simeon had that. Right. So you, you know, do what Simeon did, and right. you'll get what Simeon right. got. Right. No, it only happened one time. There That's are right. no new messiahs coming. Right. And you can't use it as, as an illustration of the great things that will happen in your life. Right. Because we're not the messiah, and we're not going to foresee the Simeon. messiah. Mm -hmm. We can already see back right. to this great thing that happened. That's where our attention should be directed. Just read words our faith. on the page yeah. that you wrote. Now the words are like fire shut up in their soul. It changes their heart. It renews their mind. It accomplishes spiritual purposes in their life. So listen, if you're a writer, well then write. Do your best work. But in the end, what you're praying for is that God's Spirit will anoint your words with power and with fire to affect people for the glory of God. Don't just speak. Affect people for the glory of God. So... Again, this is not wrong that we should want to affect people for the glory of God. Um, but this celebrity culture, and she's at the very top of the food chain right. of the female celebrity culture, it's so um, disingenuous, I would say. Mm -hmm. You know, she's supposed to be talking to all the normal people, the average people, the common people. Right. Frankly, the less talented and less attractive and less capable people. Let's just be honest. Most people aren't like her. Most people don't have her talent to, to be such a great performer. Mm -hmm. But she's acting like they all do. Right. That's what bugs me. Yeah. 
And I, and I know she wouldn't come right out and say that she expects people to be just like her, but that's the implication throughout all of this. Don't just dance, perfect your craft, but in the end, what you're looking for is not just talent. What you want is a gift. And there's no amount of manufacturing that can give what only the Holy Spirit can give. So when the Holy Spirit takes up residence on the inside of you and on the inside of me at the moment... I'm confused because now she's saying about when he takes up residence in you like it's a future event. Right, right. When she said, as soon as you get saved, you got you, the Holy Spirit in you. Yeah, you got all of it. Got all of it in you. That was not the accent she used. Well, whatever. The moment we are saved, we have the privilege of having relationship with Jesus Christ, having relationship with God, having communication with him because of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. That if when God sent his son Jesus to die on the cross, if when we received that gift, we got a ticket to eternity. And that was all we got. Just that we knew we were saved from death, hell, and the grave, and we got to experience eternity with Jesus Christ. Listen, if that's all we ever got out of this salvation deal, that would have been enough for us. <laughs> salvation deal. Okay, so, that is enough. And 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 here's the thing. This is this okay. Is, no, no. The thing is, is that what is the thing? Salvation is salvation. Period. You get you are saved from from death and from eternal hell and damnation. That's huge. Yeah, she is going to say... Whatever that, my no, point that I'm making is that she's making it dovetail into also your salvation, what you get. <laughs> Behind door number two is you get to dance, sing, have all these gifts, and but, it's anointed by God, but you got to give God the anointing. You can do all you can, but you have to do this. Yo. It's like, okay, no, sal salvation is just salvation. What, what does that word mean? Saving you from something, right? right? Saving you from damnation. So for her to use that wrong gets me offended. I am offended. What she says here, again, offended. It's, it's really close to the truth. She right. says, if that's all you got, it would be fine. That's enough. But you're going to get more. As opposed to what most people say. They go even further and they say, well, you don't just get saved. They, make, they actually downplay salvation as if... It's something that happens way off in the distance, and it's really not that big of a deal. Well, she's kind of doing that. Watch what she does. Let's listen to her again. Okay. I want to be fair. All right. I don't want people to be mad so at us. So you've heard this before. I did. We got a ticket to eternity, and that was all we got. Just that we knew we were saved from death, hell, and the grave, and we got to experience eternity with Jesus Christ. Listen, if that's all we ever got out of this salvation deal, that would have been enough for us to celebrate for the rest of our days. But when that might have been enough for us, it wasn't enough for him. <laughs> he said, no, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit so that I don't, you don't have to wait to get to heaven to experience heaven. But so that you can have a little bit of heaven right now while you're here on planet Earth. I stand on my words. I don't take anything back. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling you, she says the right thing. And then she flips the coin upside down and says the opposite of it. And the two things are going on at the same time. And there are things in the Christian faith that do have that kind of tension. But yeah, she, this whole thing about I wish, Simeon got heaven on earth. Right. I wish we would see more of the separation of the holy gift of Jesus Christ and his death and resurrection and, and revere that and worship that. And not worship, worship all the other stuff. Worship him. Yes, worship him and what he has done, which, which is that. All of he done. All, all of he done. All he done. <laughs> all he done. Instead of now trying to bring ourselves into the grandeur of the whole thing and say, mm -hmm. okay, now I get to. It's yeah. like I think the pride. A, the pride uh, just gets, you know, fanned into, you know, a you're flame exactly of right. pride. It's, and it's a combination oh. of... This sincere desire to do stuff for right. God, to be a, a servant of God. And to be so grateful and thankful for what he's done for you, you want to serve others. It may not be dancing. What if it's about going talking to people in the hospital or your neighbor next door who needs to yeah. have some kind of hope given to them? Or just the simplest things. And working with your children, praying yep. for your children. Working but, on your husband. So, so let's <laughs> see. Husband working on your wife. Don't, uh, okay. I'm, I'm on going my to rant. give you myself in the person of the Holy Spirit so that you will see what it's like to walk with me and talk with me. Now you're you're pounding a little too much there. So let's let her go. And have friendship with me and an ongoing relationship with me. That is what it means to have the Holy Spirit. Amen. But Luke says that Simeon did not just have the Spirit in him. No, no, it was on him. 
it says that the Spirit was upon him. Mm. Mm. This tells us that there is a difference between the Spirit being in you okay. and the Spirit Again, being what is the story supposed to be about? Jesus. It's supposed, supposed to be about how you get... Yeah, you got the, the spirit, spirit on you or in you. You Doesn't got the, all the glory and power of God within you. That's fine. It doesn't do anything because you need to have it upon you. See, it has a big Again, the difference. story is about Jesus. It's not about Simeon having it on him. And that is to point to God and point to his faithfulness to Simeon and to show that God is faithful with his word and that he blessed Simeon, not because the spirit of God was on him. And there's a difference between on and in. Or upon our pond. Yeah, Todd White does this too. I just was uh, working on a video the other day and he's talking about that, yeah, you have the Holy Spirit, but you don't have the Holy Spirit. See, they had the Holy Spirit with them, but they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them or upon them. He was there, but they were still living as orphans. And the body of Christ doesn't have to live as orphans because God's our Father and the Holy Spirit doesn't just live, it, live in us, but he wants to rest upon you. See, the Holy Spirit lives in every believer, but he doesn't rest upon every believer. I they was, jumped through another hoop. Yeah, jump through. Wait no. a minute, found another one. Wait a minute, this word says in. This word says on. This word says about. This one says find. This one says seek. I mean, yeah. we can take one word out of everything and make a, a sermon out of it. You can. You can take a word out of anything in Scripture, take it by itself, and decide this is what the focus is going to be, opposed to saying, looking at the whole... Especially if you got the Amplified. Uh, right? I want to live a life that invites the presence of God's spirit on me. <laughs> okay, so so what you do invites the Holy Spirit. This is the second half of this little speech, this little segment of a speech. I don't think it's the whole thing. And all she's going to do here is pound you with how you can get the presence of God to show up in your life. Even though she starts by saying you've got all of the all Holy of Spirit already. you'll ever get. Mm -hmm. Didn't know if you knew it. Oh, he's in me, but I want the kind of life that is a magnet that calls down the grace, the favor, the anointing, the presence of God upon my life. I want to live in such yielded surrender to him that not Go, just is he going. in me. That's a gift that all of us get who have placed faith in Jesus Christ. But I don't just want him in me. I want him on my life. <laughs> this is a Bill Johnson thing. She's actually duplicating Bill Johnson Unbelievable. Here. Yeah. I mean, if I was a non-Christian, you know, just somebody kind of trying to reason through the, the language and the mm -hmm. things that she's teaching, yeah. I'd be like, wow, I am really confused. Right. What is this Holy Spirit she's talking about? Because this sounds like make-believe. Yeah. I want the evidence of him on my life. I want it so that when I do something or say something or participate in something or pray over something, I want it so that when I walk away, people don't just say Priscilla was here. I want them to say, no, God's presence was here. That only happens when the spirit of God is on you. And so if you want to mother your kids in such oh, a way that you leave the oh, imprint of God on those kids, the spirit can't just be in you. He got to be on you. If you want to be the wife that God has called you to be, single woman, if you want to be the kind of single woman that God has called you to be, if you want to be the kind of employer or employee... Have an M&M, &M, honey. You need, a, you need a chocolate break. <laughs> okay, I'll have an M&M. &M. People at home, are you struggling with us? Sorry about that. You're the one that chose to watch this video. We can't, we can't help yeah. you. Yeah. Why does anybody watch our videos? I don't know. Why do we even do them? I don't know. <laughs> Because we want to gain weight. That's why. Because of our uh, gluttony. <laughs> it gives us an excuse to be gluttonous. Glutton. J JK. Glutton. Glutton. <laughs> <laughs>
There's all sorts of good Christian people who are not living their best life. They're and not their best this. life is going to be in heaven. Mm-hmm. That's the eternity. That's their hope. And she is... Um, she's claiming that's important while she's really making it clear that you got to do a lot more. you got to do a lot more. And basically you're not enough. You're not enough. You're not enough. But she's going to show you how without really showing you how. Yeah. She's just going to use a lot Burden. of words. More law. Mm-hmm. But just I'm like asking that God will allow it there to be 2,000 women who leave this place today at the end of the day. And God's spirit isn't just in us, but God's spirit is on us. Mm. Where we are marked by the presence of God. Where when people encounter us, there's something unusual, something distinct, something that they cannot touch or taste or communicate with their five physical senses. There's an intangible that is on their life. Where when the employer is looking to give the promotion... I think it'd be nice if every woman in their seats was impersonating her to her yeah. as she's I think the doing all these gestures. I think the reason why I'm so upset is, for a lot of reasons, but I remember feeling not enough. I remember mm-hmm. feeling like, if I, if I could only be this, or if I could only be that, and after a while, you know, you if you believe this is truth... And you believe this is from God and you don't see it in your life and you're not good enough or it's not happening or God's not opening those doors because he told you he was. He's just about to then. He's... You know, you give up on your faith. Mm-hmm. It's like, what? I mean, it's all these little bread crumb trails mm-hmm. again. Mm-hmm. If you eat enough little trails and if you find enough little go, things behind basically whatever. Basically, go to more conferences, buy more it's books. It's awful, you know. That's it. Go to conferences. Depressing. Buy more books. And there's nothing but despair. Ultimately. Ultimately, yes. But at first it sounds really good. These women left Pump it this, up. Yeah, it's a, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a wonderful experience. And oh. And guess what they were talking about when they went back home and talked to their friends? Oh, you should have heard so-and-so. You yeah. should have heard her. She was great. She was so good. I got all of her books. You're going to have to read them after I'm done. You're going to have to watch the video. You know, to you understand the scripture, you're going to have to read this book. Yes. You have to understand what Simeon was really about. Okay, guess what I'm doing? I'm calling Daryl. We need a We need a Daryl break. <laughs> we do. He um, diligently listened to the same thing. So we were going to diligently listen to the same thing, and then you know what you said to me? I wanted, is, I wanted to wing it. Yeah, and then you ended up listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> I think I listened to you, the whole thing. Listen, I'm not cheating. I just, you cheated! You know what? Honestly, I said I wanted to wing it because I thought we were going to do it that day, and we could just get get it over with. It could be wung. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to wing it so it could be wung. But then I said, you know, I'm already down here. Setting Might, up as well. Might as well. Suffer through it. Oh, it's right. I don't have a place to set the phone. I always do this. Do you want me to go get no, the I got stand? It. I got it. Hello. Hey, Daryl. Hey, Daryl. You are on I'm the sure. air. Hi, Paula. Hey there. How's I it? your dogs. I assume you have the dogs. Yep, there. they're right here. Yep, they're doing good. They saw that. They saw the treats, and so, so Ginger's they like, did "What? We have treats here, and so we had to hide them because oh. they were acting really obnoxious." Oh, you have treats. Okay. Hi. You hear Daryl? <laughs> Ginger I can't even you. remember your dog's names. I keep forgetting. Well, they keep changing. Yeah. <laughs> I know. That's why they keep changing. Well, we haven't lost any lately. Yay! It's, oh, that's that's good. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Ginger and Kiko. Ginger and Kiko. That's right. Okay, so we didn't get all the way through Priscilla Shire. It's too painful. We're about two thirds of the way through. She's now at the place where um, you know the spirit of God has to be on you, not in you. Simeon No, it has to be more than in you. It has to be upon you. Just like it was upon... It has to be upon you. Yes. Yes. It's not enough. Yeah. uh, I... You know, it's a very um, common and pretty elementary teaching that you learn um, as a Christian, uh, particularly if if you study, uh, read commentaries or, or go to school for theology or Bible that there's a difference between how the Holy Spirit worked in the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, and the New Testament. And in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon people, uh, that's how it's expressed, for certain purposes. For example, uh, in Judges uh, 15-14, the Holy Spirit came upon Samson uh, to uh, break the ropes. They tried to tie him up, and he broke the ropes, and defeated the uh, efforts of the Philistines, I believe it was. And in 1 Samuel eleven six, the uh, Holy Spirit came upon Saul, the ki- King Saul, uh, to also defeat uh, some enemies, to lead the people and defeat some enemies. So uh, you'll read that in commentaries. For example, I checked some of my commentaries here. Uh, Leon Morris, a very well-known 
Christian scholar, New Testament scholar. He says that the meaning of the Holy Spirit on Simeon was, uh, he says, first of all, it seems to mean it was on him continually. And then he says, in the old dispensation, we read of the Spirit as coming upon people on special occasions. But a continuing presence is rare. Simeon's endowment was something special. The Spirit had indicated to Simeon that he would see the Messiah before his death. And this is this is a, a teaching that's just very common. I mean, that this is basically the teaching of, of Orthodox Christianity, mm-hmm. of how the Spirit operated in, in the different covenants, the old and the new. Uh, an interesting thing, uh, in John 7, uh, you see this kind of explained a little bit in John chapter 7. Uh, where is it here? John chapter 7, where uh, Jesus is um, at the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, what is the reference? I have to look it up again here. Looks like it starts at 14, maybe? John seven thirty-seven. Okay. Oh. John 7. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. By this he means the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet mm-hmm. been glorified. So so what we have in, in this teaching here, as John, the Gospel writer, comments on Jesus' uh, little message there, is that until Jesus was crucified, buried, risen, and ascended, the Spirit would not be given. And this is consistent with Pentecost, where uh, it fulfills Joel chapter 2, as Peter said. Mm -hmm. And there it talks about how Joel talks about how God will pour out his Spirit on all flesh. Now, that doesn't mean every single person, obviously, but it means people of every... Uh, social status, every race, every gender, every age, uh, that's what's mentioned in that prophecy. And so Pentecost fulfills that, and then the Spirit comes uh, to dwell within those who are believers. And when Peter gives his sermon in Acts 2.38, he, he says to the people he's just given the sermon to about the fact that they crucified their Lord, and then they are cut to the heart, and they say, what shall we do? And he says in Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Right. Uh, and he says, this, uh, this promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off. So actually, she's turned things upside down hmm. by saying that <clears throat> having the Spirit on you is a better thing than having Mm. the Spirit in you. It's actually the reverse, because in the Old Covenant, the Spirit just came upon people temporarily, normally, for a certain purpose, either to fight a battle or to prophesy or something like that. Uh, But in the New Covenant, the Holy Spirit comes to dwell within. And so I I don't... She didn't give any, any references to back up um, like her main thing seemed to be this, this statement she made that a life that is a magnet mm-hmm. that calls down the grace, the favor, the anointing, the presence of God upon me. Yeah, how is that not okay. a works-based sort of Christian life? Yeah, it is. So it, it kind of defeats the whole uh, the whole definition of grace. I right. mean, grace is free. <laughs> So if you need to do something extra to get more grace, mm-hmm. then that seems that grace is no longer grace. It becomes a payment for something that you do. Mm-hmm. And her answer to that, what that is, is personal holiness, mm-hmm. which she kind of lists things that would not be holy, right. common list of different things. But she doesn't really say how to achieve that. Right. Except to quit doing bad stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah. Which, I mean, that's kind of a harsh way of putting it, I guess. But basically, that's that's what she's saying, that just quit doing this stuff 
Stop and that. then when you become more holy, then your holiness, your life will be a magnet, almost like an automatic thing that God will have to send down upon you this extra measure of his spirit, whatever that is. But she doesn't really give any any New Testament references for that. Or like, where is that taught? I don't, you know, in Ephesians 5.18, for example, Paul says, keep on being filled with the spirit. He says, don't be drunk with wine where, where it is excess, but keep on being filled with the spirit. So I don't, I don't know of anywhere in the New Testament that says, don't just have the spirit in you. Make sure you get the spirit on you. So, so Daryl, Daryl, I don't see that. Yes. It seems to me that I had mentioned this just before we called you that you can take any single word in any part of the Bible, really, and then expound on it to make it sound or mean something more because of your interpretation of it, opposed to take, you know, when you take it out of context and decide it means more or less than what it's actually meaning. Yes. Um, and that, that's one of the problems that, um, the church is infected with <laughs> preachers want to say something and uh, they have some idea um there may be even it, it may be even a good idea it might might be not be a heresy or anything right but uh so they'll find some passage they can use and and if it's not in the normal version that they use they'll look around all the versions and they'll find some version that says it in a way that they want to say it and then they'll use that. So it gets to be kind of a shady enterprise in a way. Yes, I mean, a shady about, enterprise. That's really uh, smart. I mean, it's not, I'm not saying that Priscilla has, you know, bad motives or anything. I'm just saying, I, I, look, I looked up her bio and she has a master's degree in biblical studies from Dallas Theological Seminary. Isn't that surprising? So I'm thinking, well, you know, I, I'm thinking somewhere along the line she should have encountered the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, uh, she seems, you know, very sincere, and I'm sure she's right. a Christian, and I, I don't question that. Her dad is, you know, a very well-known evangelical preacher, has a big church, or did have a big church. I don't know if he's retired no, or not. No, he still does. But anyway, you know, um, very upright, upstanding Christian people. As far as we but, can tell, and, I mean, but, but and, then... yeah, in this particular case, so what? What I what I got out of this, the longing that she's expressing seems to be how to encounter and experience God. Yes, and one of the things that she says, which was was kind of a stopping point for me here to take note of, was when she addressed the audience, only a handful in the audience would yes. have a real encounter with God. Yes. Okay, so so the, that expresses then this idea of a, an elitist kind of Christianity, yes. which is the essence of pietism and mysticism, uh, moralism, that there's a secret to being really spiritual. Mm. And her answer to that is personal uh, holiness that in order to be really spiritual, to have this this extra measure of the Spirit, not just in you, but coming up on you, whatever that means. And I, to me, she didn't explain that very well, uh, what that is exactly, that you have to have a holy life. And then she even says church is not enough. Right. We didn't Studying get that yet. the Bible is not enough. Mm -hmm. She said those two things. Yep. So, so then if you... If you say, well, what the church is, that G Jesus said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So so if the institution that Jesus has established to, uh, to save people, to shepherd people, if that's not enough, and then if the word that he has given is not enough, then what is left? So then, then you're forced into some mystical... Mm -hmm thing where where you have to go have some way of getting a direct connection with god apart from these things so her approach seems to be a combination of mystical and moral which, so yeah which both with both we fail miserably at i mean number one we shouldn't be mis right. mystical and number two are we that moral and that pure that we know we heard yeah. from god outside of the bible i don't think so because right. i don't think that's possible 
No, and and the other thing that I I noted, she did mention, you know, Jesus dying and rising and all, you know, she did mention that, which is fine. And uh, she talked a bit about the fruit of the Spirit, which I thought was was okay. That Mm -hmm. was that was okay. But but she didn't really deal with what happens when we fail at her enterprise. Yeah. Which is really what you're talking about. What happens when we go down this road of trying to have this holy life that will give us this grace and favor and anointing and presence of God? What happens when we realize that we're not doing so well at that? She didn't really give the answer to that, although I'm sure she knows it. I mean, yeah, First you go, John one nine is not hidden. Uh, you go to another that's conference. Right. That's what that's what yeah, the answer is. So I mean, she didn't really, she didn't really address that. She she said something about open our eyes to catch sight of God. She said, but she didn't really go into that at all. That's that doesn't so, really mean anything. How do you do that? So, you know, Jesus said, He who has seen me has seen the Father, he said in John 14. Hebrews 1 says, God in these days speaks to us only through his Son. So there's a lot of, a lot of just, I don't know what you'd call it, platitudes in a way. Right. um, But not a whole lot of how does this happen, you know, and what, what happens when you fail. So it seems to me that if you try to go down this path that you're either going to have pride that I'm getting there Mm -hmm. or despair Mm -hmm. that I'm not making it. And so therefore, since the church isn't enough and since the Bible apparently is not enough, according to what she said, then where else am I going to go? I just have to keep trying harder or give up. Maybe I, maybe I find another teacher or go, Mm -hmm. go to, like you said, go to another conference where, more secrets are going to be given. Mm-hmm. It it just seems like a treadmill to me. I don't, mm-hmm. I I don't know. I I mean I I can't speak to her directly or question her or ask her questions. So I don't really know what she would say to these things. Right. But uh, like you know, if you read John fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen, those brief passages where Jesus teaches in the upper room discourse about the uh, Holy Spirit. It seems, first of all, that the Holy Spirit is to remind believers of what Jesus taught and what he said. And the second thing, the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. So Jesus even said that the Spirit's coming has a purpose, but he never said anything quite like what she's saying, and I don't see it in the New Testament. So I'm, I'm not sure what she's basing it on other than she wants to answer this question since she seems to have abandoned the church as having an answer, really, or the Bible as being enough, she wants to answer this question of how do you really encounter God? How do you open your eyes and catch sight of God? What do you do? And her answer seems to be... Do more, try harder. Yeah, a holy life, which becomes a magnet Mm -hmm. that brings down God's grace, favor, anointing, and presence. Even, even though she starts by saying, you've already got all of the Holy Spirit you're ever going to get. He's already in you. You've already got all the glory of God, the power of God. It's all inside of you. But right. you you still have a whole bunch of things that you haven't given him permission to do yet. Yeah. Which is really so confusing. I, I don't, um, you know, I've, not, I've never really listened a lot to her father. I assume she's probably gotten a lot of teaching from her father as well so yeah. I, I don't really know a there, lot about there's a him, couple of uh, things but, that yeah his, his teaching there's a couple of areas where he's really questionable and i forgot what those areas are i looked into yeah. it it's it's kind of going into the weeds a bit yeah hey, i so, mean he's just he's just a couple years younger than i am so he's been around you know most huh. of my adult life i've heard about him I've, I've listened to him a couple times but not i you know he's not been one of my heroes or anything like that so i don't know that much about him but Hey, so let's move on. What about Lisa Harper? Did you listen to that? Is there anything to say about Yeah, her? I did. There wasn't too much there. She she was talking about Anna as being a leader. It seemed like she was trying to, I, I don't know if she was talking just to women. I'm not sure. It's a women's conference, I believe. Oh, okay, so so she w- was obviously trying to um, to get women, you know, build up women or something. She was talking about Anna as being this great leader. 
which I I didn't quite resonate with that because Anna was spending all of her uh, all of her adult life into old age in the temple praying and fasting and so on. So I don't know how she could be a leader. I didn't seem to have a, in order to be a leader, you got to have followers. And right. somebody <laughs> told me years ago, what's the definition of a leader? A leader is someone with followers. So I, you know, I don't know who her followers were, but <clears throat> she, she was trying to make these jokes by talking about, you know, Anna putting on her, her hose and all that. I, yeah. I just thought that was a little, we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. A little out there, but I'm trying to joke around about it, but, She's yeah, a public, she didn't say, she's a she public didn't say speaker. a whole lot. I, I never heard of her before, so I don't, <clears throat> I don't, I don't, and her thing on there was really short. Yeah. So. And then we get, we get the last part. I, I'm, in fact, uh, do you have it in front of you, the timestamp I sent you for Christine Kane? Here we go. I knew You was, should I knew be thinking like the people of Earth are thinking. Because you're, I've sent you, Christine, from heaven to Earth. Earth is a colony. Just in case you're wondering, we, we are here. Are you colonizers? Yes. Yes. We're on assignment in this colony called Earth. We are from heaven. Before we ever got into this body, we existed as a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah, you know, um, if you look up the, the second and third century church father origin from mm -hmm. Alexandria, Egypt, he, he taught that. He taught the pre-existence of the soul. Hmm. And the church condemned that teaching, um, <laughs> as well as a few other things that Origen uh, was involved with. But he, he was heavily influenced by uh, by Greek philosophy, Neoplatonism, and so forth. And um, they taught, some of them taught also this idea that souls were just up there, and then they got various bodies, and then when that body died, they'd get another body, sort of a kind of a modified version of what we know of as reincarnation uh, hmm. in Hinduism and the New Age. Not quite the same thing, but so so. But I, I'm amazed that I'm amazed that someone going around speaking within the wider evangelical community could get away with that. Yeah, that's a Mormon teaching too. I mean, yeah, the Mormons believe that. I mean that. That, that shows to me that she's not been corrected on that, apparently. I mean, maybe somebody has, but I... Oh, I doubt it. These people anyway, are... Pro they're professional that speakers. That shows that people do not know the Bible or Christian theology at all. They're, they're just wanting to be hyped up and, and uh, made to feel good. I, you know, I, did, I mean, I heard, a, I heard a, a preacher one time say that karma's in the Bible. Wow. And, and you know, he doesn't understand what karma is. I mean, he was just thinking, well, if you do something bad, you know, bad things are going to happen. Okay, well, the Bible does say that in some senses, but mm -hmm. uh, it's not it's not what karma is. So, so people say these things, and people are so uninformed about the faith and theology and church history that they... They probably just let it pass by and didn't even give it a thought. I, I well, mean, you know, I, I, when you go, uh, if we go back to what you said earlier about pietism and mysticism, yeah, if you have those two foundational uh, clusters of ideas, it, it makes mm -hmm. sense that you might hear Christine Kane uh -huh. say something like that, which is actually much more Gnostic than it is Christian, and you would say, well, you know, she means well. Pietism really emphasizes the heart and your feelings and being it sincere. Does. So as long as you're sincere yeah. and you really mean it from your heart, you can be wrong. That's fine. It doesn't do any harm. Yeah. And if you believe that theology is only this intellectual exercise where you're just arguing about things that don't really make any difference, well, then you can really believe anything. You could throw out Paul's teaching to Timothy. Uh, all of his teachings, right. yeah. Because right. he taught theology right. constantly. Right. So, I mean, that really, if if you grasp onto that concept then it it really does away with sin i mean if what she was saying is we're sent here from heaven hmm. okay if 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 believers are sent here from heaven then they're on mission from god when they got here <laughs> so so there's no there's no need for 
the gospel. There's no need for baptism. There's no need for conversion. Uh, we're just here sent from heaven. Yeah. But but the only person in Scripture sent directly from heaven was Jesus. Uh, I mean, he even says that he is he is the bread come down from heaven. But you know what you're doing, Daryl. Uh, you're taking an idea and you're you're bringing it to its logical conclusion, which normally doesn't happen in these circles. You just Whenever somebody says something, as long as they use a lot of drama and emotion, yeah, you just go along with them and you don't question it, you don't even think about it. You just assume sure. that it's true. And all these people are fantastic speakers. I mean, they have charisma and they're very good at oratory. Yeah. And that's why they draw crowds. But, you know, you have to, you have to listen and, you know, like Scripture tells us to test the spirits to see if they're from God. Right. And to be like the Bereans who search the scriptures daily to see if what Paul was saying was true. And and that's what we have to do. And when somebody says something like that, if you follow if you follow that line of thinking, there are consequences to that. Exactly. And you know So then we, we become rivals of Jesus. Right. So uh, years ago when I was in grad school, um, I I was studying John and I, I read an article uh, written by uh, by some scholar, it was a periodical article, uh, it was about Jesus, he called him the man from heaven. Well, that's what Paul says in First, first Corinthians 15, right? He is the man from heaven. Adam is the man from earth, he's earthy. You know, the second Adam is the man from heaven. So, uh, you know, if we're, if we're sent from heaven, then what do we need Jesus for? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, th- this stuff has implications, and yeah. you have, you have to think about it, and and apparently, I I don't know where Christine Kane got that notion. Maybe, maybe she had some teachers, or maybe she read some of this stuff. I don't know from on you know from some of this uh, ancient history. <coughs> Excuse but, me, but that's a strictly Gnostic concept. That's mm-hmm. what the Gnostics taught. The Gnostics taught that those who had true knowledge, that found this knowledge about uh, who they really were. They were from heaven, and they had the spark of this high God in them. And once they knew that, they were saved, and they were going to escape this world. And, uh, I mean, there's a lot of that in what she said. Mm -hmm. Although at the end she does say, well, we don't want to be, that doesn't mean that we're not going to, you know, uh, involve ourselves in life and do the things we have to do. But yet she does have this concept of, bringing the kingdom to earth which which is uh, i guess a common thing in some of this nar teaching and stuff, some of these people, yeah. is that you know you're you're going to bring the kingdom to earth and she didn't speak of it as if god is bringing the kingdom if jesus is bringing the kingdom but rather that we are bringing the kingdom good luck with that so yeah so <laughs> there, there's just some stuff there that um uh, and again, you know, she does speak of Jesus dying for our sins, rising from the dead, you know. So she's she's got she's got this core of orthodoxy, but mm-hmm. yet around the edges, um, from outside of it, she's got a lot of this stuff that's really not Christian. It's mm-hmm. rotten. At all. It's rotten. It, it it is just it it's it's heretical. Uh, some of it. Certainly, this pre-existence of the soul thing is heretical. The Church condemned it, mm-hmm. uh, as so when Origen taught it uh, back in the uh, on the early third century. So, you know, people, I, I don't know. I don't know how they get away with this stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you have anything else you want to ask them before we go? Because we got no. Let's keep moving. Thank you, Daryl. Thank you so much. Okay. You're and welcome. I, and I, and we'll be talking to you again very soon. Okay, take care. You yep. too, bye-bye. bye-bye. Yeah, bye. So, two things. One is, the people in, their, in the audience and whoever's listening to teachers like this have to take responsibility for what they're listening to and to know if it's true or not. And to take responsibility means you have to know your scripture and you have to know what it really means and, and what, what's being said. And the second thing is, these people who are taking these leadership positions... And they're so sure of themselves. Uh-huh. They have to, I mean, when I think about just the whole in and on of the spirit, uh-huh. it's like, okay, 
you now are going to be held accountable. Anybody will. Everybody will be held accountable. It's funny because she's just about to start talking about how we're going to be held accountable. You know, and it's, if I'm going to get in front of all these people and I'm so sure of what I know, Mm -hmm. and I'm not really using scripture as, right, as, as my foundation and going back and checking to make sure that I'm not off. And it's just this whole yeah. pre-existence. You could easily go back into scripture and say, okay, is this correct or not? I know. It's crazy. I mean, that's a basic thing. Tavner Smith is a defrocked <sighs> pastor that was found to be having an affair, so they finally got rid of him. But he had a very, very popular church. I believe it was in Chattanooga, but I could be wrong. Somewhere in the south. And Chris did uh, sermon reviews years ago, back when it was a podcast. And he was teaching this very thing, that we had a pre-existing soul and that we entered into the body. And I remember going on the, uh, I think it was called Venue Church, if I remember right. I remember going on their Facebook page and asking the question, hey, when did, since when did Tavner start teaching Mormon doctrine? And nobody responded to me. They don't care. It's more like a business. Okay, let's get back to where we were. Yeah. I, I want to see if I can or find... Lives. And it is... No, here we go. go Here we go. You cannot be moved, not because you manufactured your way there, but because God's Spirit has placed you there. Yeah. God's Spirit on your life. Yeah. Is what makes it so that you don't have to market yourself because you've already been marked by the presence of Almighty God. That's a that's one of those lines that you know she wrote down and memorized, and she uses the the, the most drama. As, as humanly possible to really push home because she's like, I, I got this one line. Wait till you hear this. This is so good. Does she do any marketing, do you suppose? Do you think there was any marketing to promote the event that she's no, at right now? No, because God's already marked her. That's right. She just showed up and there was people there. There was no marketing involved. Oh, I want God's spirit on me. Can I mm. tell you this? Are you listening? No, I'm not. There is one thing that attracts the presence of God to rest on our lives. You got a verse for that? And it is. Yeah. Repentance? Holiness. No. <laughs> Holiness. The whisper. Long pause. Plain old, flat out. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and, and he, will, he lift. will lift you up. That's a good, that's a really good verse that James. would actually apply. Yeah, it would. Old school. Old school? What school actually even had holiness? That's why Jesus came and died on the earth, because there was no holiness. Uh, yeah, that's that's absolutely true. And it's also true that she's talking like, what are you talking about, like in the 1950s when everyone was holy? Are you talking <laughs> yeah. about, uh, yeah, old school. I implore you, sisters, by the mercies of God, to walk in a manner worthy of the calling by which you have been called. That if you come, if I come into this room and we celebrate till we are blue in the face and we wave our hands and we read the scriptures and we worship, but we walk out of here and we live in a way that is incongruent with everything that we've heard here today. If we do not choose to walk in a way that honors God, we will have wasted the time that we have spent here. And what honors God? Be good, Brians. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, okay, am I, I'm going to test the spirits. I'm going to test this, your word. To, I'm not going to have tickling ears like yeah. Paul said to Timothy, that there will come a time when people won't have anything except not sound teachers, but the ones who want to hear, the ones who... And she's really on the edge of these things as opposed to some of the teachers we've done. She's not saying right. this super outright heretical stuff of about becoming that's the gods. slippery slope yeah that's what started us down yep. the slippery slope is yep. stuff like this being in, introduced into our lives actually and things were it clarified. sounded good things weren't clarified enough so no. that you just assume well she she's got to be right so you got to take the next step and the next step and the next yeah. thing you know what you're then you are next thing you know you're <laughs> flopping around on the floor and People are knocking you over. And, and you think it's right. You yeah. think you felt God. And if there is something that breaks my heart for my own generation and the generation coming up after me, is that social media has made it so that we are more interested in impressing people 
than walking holy before our God. I'm sorry, but that's just an applause line. It's true. It's absolutely true. It's, it's not that she's said anything wrong. Right. But she's a celebrity. Right. Do you think she's got a, a person on her staff in charge of her social media content? I'll bet she does. No. <laughs> so. She might not. We don't know. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm just saying that social media is is a problem for sure. Yeah. But it's kind of like I don't know. I'm I'm probably not going to articulate this really well. So I'm not sure if I should go down this road. It's kind of like contrasting, you know, if you if you give up social media and you don't try to look good on social media, you will therefore be on your way to living a holy life. And better. However, you have to get up and get dressed every day. So how are you going to look in front of all the people that you're actually in front of or at your job you or should, at church? You should look terrible. I mean, when you want to take it to its logical conclusion, do you think you she want spends... to make it, you want everyone to see you and make you look good? You know, you want to look good or whatever she said. It's it's making yourself look good. I'd like to see her her bill for cosmetics and hair care and clothing. <laughs> if this isn't important, if looking right. good doesn't matter. Right. Now she's saying looking good on social media and and the point could be made that, yeah, people do post pictures of themselves where they make themselves of look course. thinner than they really are and they take away blemishes and they they do make themselves literally look better than they actually do, which is which is a, it's a legitimate problem. Mm -hmm. to, I'm on her Facebook page now. Are you? Mm-hmm. On Facebook, she has 1.1 million followers. She's promoting her book, it looks like. She's Got some exciting news is starting she, September 7th. Is she marketing her book? i to invite you to join her as she jo journeys through the Breathe Bible Study Online. Mm. We are more interested in being perfectly lit than we are in making sure that we're laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven. Why are yeah, you yelling? Please stop yelling. She's got a microphone two inches from her mouth. Oh, that was in July Lord, of help 21. us. When because of our hubris, because of our arrogance, hubris. because of our pride, we are more interested in receiving the applause of people than we are. Okay, could the, the I, this is one of my favorite lines. The iron, irony is thicker than Benny Hinn's wallet. <laughs> She's more, we're more interested in getting the applause. I'm like, what the heck are you doing, lady? Right. Everything you do is getting applause. Are ...of making sure that we will receive the applause of heaven. But a day is coming, y'all, sooner. And you know what? Getting the applause of heaven is really, I think, confusing because what we what we are missing in that phrase and in that emphasis, we're missing the whole idea of the righteousness of Christ being imputed to us. Mm -hmm. There's been no mention of that in this whole talk. Mm -hmm. And, and um, it's not that she probably doesn't ever mention it ever anywhere, but... If you don't emphasize it and emphasize it and emphasize it, you always veer towards you got to do more to make God like you, to attract God, to get God to operate in a way that he hasn't operated so far. You got to do stuff. And that's the entire emphasis of what she's saying. But the imputed righteousness of Christ is just the idea that when God looks at us, he sees us through what Christ has done. He looks at us and he doesn't see our sin, not because he's going, ah, oh, you knucklehead, I don't care if you sin, I just love you because you're just a... You're just a lovable knucklehead. No, he's saying, I actually hate your sin, but because of what Christ has done, I instead see his perfect life and his atoning sacrifice on the, on the cross has caused me to now see you as if you were Christ. That's what she's not saying at all. And she's totally emphasizing how we need to live holy lives, which isn't wrong to say that we should live holy lives. We should, but we never do. I, you know, and the idea of, well, so that we can get the applause of heaven. I don't want the applause of heaven. I just want to get in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like that to me is, that's life. That's, 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 and, and to, and to be there to worship God, not to, so that I can get applause in heaven. Right. I mean, what kind of focus is that? I know. That is like, an like awful when focus. You, when you go to heaven, you're going to be here. like, hey, everybody. <laughs> Remember me? Remember me? We I... had that YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I know. I helped the old lady over the oh, across the street. We're gonna go to I heaven. Took in, we took in some senior dogs yeah. that you know, and they died, but we took care of them. I mean, it's like, I just oh. 
Yeah. You know, again, again, it's all about me. It's about, and the emphasis is not on when we go to heaven, what we really should be looking forward to saying is, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that I'm even here because of what Christ did, not because of what I did. That's right. Yeah. (gasps) Then we think that we're going to look our Savior. I just want to push her over in those high heels. I mean, could they be any taller? They could. I, I don't know. In his face, when we're going to see him face to face, and when we see him, he will not ask me how many Instagram followers I have. On Instagram, she has 1.3 million followers. He will not wonder how many people liked my message on Twitter. What he'll ask me is number one, did I have a relationship with his son Jesus? And then I will give an account. Yeah. You will give an account. And I don't know about y'all, but when I give an account, I'm looking for a well done. Not because I necessarily please people, but because he is pleased with my life. Applause line. And the one thing that invites the favor of God on our life, like Simeon, that will open our eyes to see him more clearly so that we don't miss him when he comes into our circumstances. So we don't miss him when he comes into our circumstances. So she's using the Savior coming into earth and Simeon being this incredibly rare and unique prophet who saw that coming because of the very rare and unique Holy Spirit being upon him in a specific way that it had happened to him and to Anna the prophetess and it happened to nobody else and it can never happen again because the Messiah will never come again the way he did. She's taking all of that and saying, you, you want to make sure you see the Messiah coming into your circumstances just like Simeon saw the Messiah coming into the earth. This is this is baloney. She's just making stuff up out of thin She's air. She's anxious to uh, go to heaven and get it well done. If you're going to give the an one account. thing that invites the favor of God on our life, like Simeon, that will open our eyes to see Him more clearly, so that we don't. This this right here. This sentence is so bad. I want to play it again. Because He is pleased with my life. The one thing. And the one thing that invites the favor of God on our life. The one thing that invites the favor of God on our lives. It's Jesus. That's it. Right. But she's, she started by saying we already got the glory of God and the power of God. All of the stuff that she said in the beginning is already in, our, in us. Mm-hmm. All of the power, all of the glory, all of the grandeur, all of the greatness of God the Father now lives on the inside of you. And then she throws it away like it's garbage. Mm-hmm. She really does. It's like, oh, yeah, you got all that stuff. I, gotta, I, wanna, I want you to make sure you know you have That's all those not things. That's important. Now let's ignore it completely so I can give a speech about how you got to do more. In a nutshell. Life like Simeon that will open our eyes to see him more clear. You know how you open your eyes to see him more? You shut up and you read the Bible. Amen. You stop talking about Amen, your own brother. ideas. Amen, brother. You preach it. Yeah. <laughs> so, this is this is what drives me nuts. I know. Yeah. Oh, Lord, open our eyes so we can see you more. How about if you just read the Bible where God promised to already be? How about if you did that instead of twisting the Bible and right. talking about your own ideas? How about that, right. Priscilla? Right, right. Clearly, so that we don't miss him when he comes into our circumstances, trying to speak to us, to answer. He's trying to speak to us, to answer us, to make himself apparent in our lives. He's trying to make himself apparent in our lives, in our circumstances. And she's rocking the Messiah child as if the two things were the same. She's doing that just to show off her biceps. (laughs) The one thing that opens up our eyes. And her triceps. Oh, yes. Is God's spirit on us. And if you want, if I want God's spirit on our lives, then we got to decide to. We got to decide to live holy. So keep going. Tell me, tell me how this is a uh, a Christianity that expresses itself in in a sense of grace. And we are given this free gift. I don't see anything for you. I see us. Yeah, you got something. It doesn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So get to work and make sure you do a bunch of things. Like I'm going to do. I'm not even And I'm doing. I'm not going to actually explain in great detail what those things are. But you better do them. And I'm going to use so much emotion that you'll think you learned something when, in fact, you have not really learned anything. Live holy. I implore you by the mercies of God to lay aside every sin, every hindrance, anything that is keeping you entangled so that you cannot run with endurance the race that is set before you. You are in my Any relationship. entanglement. Yeah, she's the entanglement. Right. Sever it at the past so that you can walk holy, sister. Any you. addiction, any habit, any lifestyle choice. 
And it can be an addiction going from place to place. Yeah. You know, listening to all these people and the prophets yeah. and another addiction. Okay, I've got to be obsessed with this because i got to hear God. I'm going to see Joyce Meyer two times. Yes. I'm going to see uh, Beth Moore three times. I'm gonna see I've the... only seen her th uh, two times, but it's in the last two years. So but I gotta... boy, when I saw her, she signed my book. You got your Beth Moore trading cards? Yeah. <laughs> that is keeping you from being free and walking in victory in Jesus name let it go but let it go it's this is all about what you got to do right the power of the holy spirit so that he can rest on your life going to church is good but it's not enough not enough wow doing your bible study oh it's great but it's not enough wow I mean, wow, we're done here. Yeah, we are done. What, what does she say next? If you want God's presence on you, marking you, making you distinct and different you from know, the people around it. you, then you got to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. So the, <laughs> the Bible isn't enough. Church isn't, Church enough, isn't enough, enough, but you have to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. Then that's enough. Yeah. Well, we're never going to be enough because we can never do that. She's doing it. That's right. Why can't you? Her and Beth Moore are doing it. And I'm not saying and, King. and I'm not saying that we walk in a defeated life. Right. We don't. We walk in a manner worthy of Christ because he died on the cross for our sins. But and that, it's only by his grace that we can walk in a manner worthy enough. It's because of what Christ has done. That's right. She's flipping it upside down. It's to about say, how are we gonna do it? You gotta live holy enough right. that you actually kind of earn right. what you've been given initially as a Because you can't gift. do that through the Bible. And you no. can't do that through church no. or listening to ministry or anything. You can do it through a conference. Oh, sure you can. Especially if they're women. <laughs> Be ye holy. Good luck with that. It's not perfection. Holiness by definition is perfection. Yeah. So this is another confusing teaching. See, so how can somebody like this... She went to a, a reputable seminary. It wouldn't be the one I would recommend. Well, you know, but... well, you know what? I mean, anybody goes down a slippery slope. Yeah. It is a call to yield to the power of the Holy Spirit in you. So if you don't yield to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's in there going, Hey, what about me? But you're not going to hear me because I'm, I'm usually talk through the Bible, but I'm not, you're not in the Bible. No, because it's not enough. The Bible's good. And you're at church. That's good, but it is not enough. You where gotta have you're going to be. It's all inward. Everything wait. she's talking about is what we got to do inside of ourselves. And how we feel. Mm -hmm. So that you do not give way to all the desires of your flesh. What it means is that you have not chosen as a lifestyle an attitude or an action that you already know is displeasing to God. Okay, but this is like Christianity 101. Right. This is obviously supposed to be a whole bunch of Christian Legalism. Women, and she's telling them the most basic thing that you shouldn't be living in this right. life of deliberate, ongoing mm -hmm. sin. Okay, you could have said that in like one or two sentences, and then you could have moved on to actually teaching the Bible, but she didn't. And also, this, this is this is actually the conclusion of this thing, where she's right. telling him the most basic right. thing. And and it's legalism that she's that she's really encouraging. If you don't do this and this and this and this, you won't then get you'll... the favor of God. Right. What the favor of God meaning? And she's not talking about salvation. Right. She's talking about getting God to do a bunch of great stuff right. in your life so that you can have a more um, uh, effective right. ministry, which would be being a public speaker, writing right. books, right. singing dancing. songs, dancing around. <laughs> If you want to be effective in those things, <laughs> you got to have the Holy Spirit come on you and you got to do a bunch of stuff Again, and live holy. Okay, love my mom, love my family. But honestly, it was legalism how I was raised. Mm -hmm. You don't drink, dance, smoke, play games, play cards. You didn't go to movies. You didn't play with your friends on Sundays. You dressed up for church. Um, of course, you didn't swear. You didn't um, hang around non-Christians. I mean, then there was a whole bunch of subcategories that my mom had that were all things that you would do to be holy so that God was pleased with you. Yeah. And that's what this reminds me of. It's like, oh, what's her what's her getting, categories and subcategories yeah. that I now need to follow? You're getting flashbacks, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> you know up front that you've already got on your calendar after this is over a place you're going or a person you're seeing that you know you don't have business being in relationship with but there's any business there's any business you've already scheduled sin into your calendar okay so this is where oh my gosh. talk about scolding these women right does she actually know that every single woman in every single seat has scheduled a bunch of sin in their lives it's just those handful though that they're really going to hear god 
The this other is, the other ones are all going to get scolded. This is where I'm going to go back to the idea of law and gospel. Yes. Uh, are you getting uh, all worked up too? A category to that originated with Martin all Luther set? that all good Protestant churches should be teaching, and many of them still do, if they're familiar with you know these categories, okay. is law and gospel. In a, in a church service, you should be gotcha. convicted of your sin, and then you should also be hearing the gospel. Right. So if on one hand you're living self-righteous, you would say, oh gosh, I don't have anything to be self-righteous about. I'm not I'm not living up to the law. Even, right. even with the progress I may have made in the last 30 years of my life, I'm still not a perfect right. holy person. And I still need to be convicted of my sin and of my self-righteousness. And then you need to be given that soothing balm of the gospel that says, Christ has died and bled for those sins. Even, right. even after 30 years of trying and right. maybe having some progress in some areas and realizing that you still aren't perfect, here's the gospel yet again. She's not doing any of that. Right. She's just hounding these women and accusing them of being deliberate sinners and, and, and making plans to go out and deliberately sin as soon as the conference ends. Right. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Priscilla. <laughs> now, if there are people really doing that, they should be convicted just by the general law. They don't need to have right. that kind of specific thing called out as if it were right. true universally of everybody in the room. Right. It's, it's kind of weird that she does yeah. this. I'm saying walk away from everything that is keeping you from having the biggest, most amazing blessing you can have on your life, and that is God's presence marking you, all up on you, oh, setting yeah. you apart, girl, for his purposes, and with his power evident through your life. Okay. Whew. We yeah. could go on. There's so much wrong with this. I know. We 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 need to there's three there's three Whoa. women. Well, you see, he's almost done too. You know what he didn't do? Are we done with her? Well, that's Is the end. Howl? Oh, oh, we weren't going to listen to the other three women? Uh, I don't want to. I don't either. And, and wait, and your capacity for joy to be happy. What are you waiting for? What miracle is on the other side of your perseverance? Y'all, there's huge miracles that happen. I love the story of Anna because if you back up, you back read up. in the middle of of Luke 2 about this teenage couple named John. talk about uh over overdoing the comedy bit you didn't hear this did you did you do you need to ask Joseph and Mary you did and they so bring this it. baby boy named Jesus Emmanuel God with us wonderful counselor According to the book of Moses, they bring him to temple in Jerusalem when he's eight wanna, days old. I want to push her over. Because that's what the law of Moses said they had to do. It said the first male who opens the womb. In other words, the firstborn son in every family. You bring him to temple. And you present him before the Lord to be consecrated to the Lord. You present him before the Lord as an eight-day-old infant. So you stop and think about Anna. She's a hundred and three. And she's in the... The girl's bathroom. She's refilling the, the paper towel really dispenser. Towel. And she hears her best friend, Simeon, who's also old as dirt. And he's <laughs> in the temple. She <laughs> hears him begin to sing because Dr. Luke says, Simeon, this man, had also prayed the same thing Anna had prayed. Lord, don't take me home until I see <laughs> Oh, okay. All right. So he's an old Here you guys man. Go. She's an old Good woman. Job. I don't know if they dated. It would be so cool if they did. Good job. <laughs> they should have really been She's doing so this funny. when Priscilla was yeah, preaching. Yeah, we forgot. <gasps> we could back it up and they could do no, that. No, 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 no. Well, good job. Why don't you take I, one more and give it to him? I huh? turned the volume down. I yeah. think I have it turned up at the right place, but I'm not actually All right. com completely so, sure. So. So. <clears throat> here you go. Good boy. So there, we're done. How long did you did you keep track? We forgot. Uh, it's over an hour. Over an hour. Good. That's all I know. That's couple all of, I know. A couple of things. Uh, I really want to encourage you guys, especially if you're not really familiar with our channel, to watch. Uh, we got a bunch of videos. Yes. We don't expect to teach everything we could possibly teach you about what's wrong with some of these really really popular teachers in just one or two videos. I also want to make really a big point out of how. Daryl and I both did two videos and we're going to be recording some more about how to correctly interpret the Bible. And uh, they're not filled with lots of jokes and clips and laughter. It's actually teaching. It's really good. It's really, actual teaching. It's, it's actually really good teaching. <laughs> and I'm really glad that so many people have already watched them and the comments good. have been really positive. But if you haven't watched those yet, this is the two-edged sword of being a YouTube person who makes 
you know, kind of sort of popular funny videos that yeah. really grab people. When you put out a video that's really important and it doesn't have all the jokes and stuff, yeah. you don't get as many views. And I kind of get that, but there's a part of me that's like, dang it. This, this video is really, really important. This is not just, you know, another video saying some of the things that have already been said. This is, this is something that I would, I would like to have three times more views, but in, in truth, it has many, it has less views than many of the other videos. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, how to interpret the Bible. The, the cover says God in a box with a question mark. And uh, there's part one, which was kind of an introduction to the series. And then there's uh, part one or part two which is really kind of the start of the series. Yeah. And I want to just encourage you to see those. I also want to encourage you, as I always do, to check out the other playlists on this channel, as well as our other friends who have other channels yeah. that are teaching a lot of the same things and maybe coming at it from a different angle or maybe answering some of the questions you have. Don't expect that we can sit there all day at the computer and answer especially really difficult and complex issues in a typed-in YouTube comment. It just isn't possible. And you need to take responsibility for your spiritual life. So we're just trying to provide as many resources as we can. And of course, the most important thing is to find a really good church. Right. And we are addressing what kind of church should I go to in that Bible interpretation, good. especially the first one. Okay. We go into that a bit. We talk good about deal. the difference between confessional churches and things like that. Okay. So that's, um, that's the um, spiel. Spiel. And today's July 1st. Happy 4th of July. That's Almost. this weekend. Yeah. We have our whole family going to be in all of our kids. That's right. Celebrating yeah. our son's birthday, which is on the 3rd of July. Kenneth Copeland won't be able to make it. No. But we, I did make that video. And thou shalt not covet thy brother's jacket. <laughs> it's the time of hard work! Help, I said that he should us. have had um, uh, the red, white, and blue in Kenneth Copeland, too. But he did his own little spiel. <laughs> That was a good title. I just used a different I one. I think it was a good one. You know what? When you start making your own yeah, videos, you can Yeah, I can use can the titles, titles, whatever. Yeah. And it will be our 38th wedding anniversary. Coming up. On July, July 12th. July 12th. Yep. And, um... Anything else? Oh, Patreon. Yeah. Oh, uh, we have a Patreon site. If, uh, if you're interested in learning more of some of the teachings, especially talking about pietism, revivalism, some of the more detailed history of the church. We also just started our first video where we tell more of our backstory, yeah. which has taken forever. Yeah. People keep saying, tell but we us did, your story. We did um, from when we were born, so when we, so <laughs> literally, when we got well, not literally, but enough to where we were born That would have been a really long video. Until when we got married, right? Yeah. So that's where we ended it. And we were only 21 when that happened. Yeah. So we're a little bit older now. It's on Patreon. It's also on AGTV, yep. which we also highly recommend you check out. The American Gospel TV. It's an app. It's only six bucks a month, just yeah. like our Patreon thing is only six bu bucks a month. And I uh, also want to mention Bezel T3. Yeah. He just put up a video today. I really want to encourage. He's one of our favorite YouTubers who really helped us a lot when yeah. we were getting started in terms of trying to get our theology straight. Right. And he just put up a video this morning on Saturday, July 1st. Right. I'm going to put a link to it. I really want you guys to watch it. And I want to encourage you to consider supporting him as he's looking at some issues with his life and his channel and the future for him. And he's just a wonderful guy, really dear friend. And we want to be as helpful to him as we can. I hope to do more of these videos where we can talk on video together. We tried it and the software wasn't okay. working. I, ha I have a hard time with software. Yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time with computers. He's an artist, and so if you'd like to see some of his art, that'd be it. great. That would yeah. be, Go to that would be helpful to support us. Actually, we're talking about having commercials in our video because we That's already right. have them by, by Google. And now we have uh, companies coming to us saying, "Do you uh, are you interested in you know having commercials? Because you know we'll we'll pay you to endorse our product, right. which I have shown no interest in. So I'm actually thinking about." Doing our own commercials for Stephen Kozar. See, where did you get that painting? What a lovely work of art. I would love to see this on my wall. <laughs> Let's see if I can find him here. Hang on a second. We Hang on a second. This. He's finding something. I hear I hear some paper rattling. And we do our own prints. He he actually produces them uh, with archival inks. Here's an impromptu commercial. There's one of my watercolor was the print of a watercolor painting. I'm one of the best watercolor realist painters in the world. Yep. Which we don't ever talk about very nope. much. This is the big, this is a print, the watercolors upstairs, the original. This is one I just finished um, earlier this year. Anyway, go to stephencozar.com. Yeah, and if you like something great, that'll help support us. Yeah, we have affordable we really prints. That. They we make do. great gift ideas. That's right. Christmas They're, is right around the corner. No, actually, you know what people use them for? When you uh, know somebody who just bought a house or they yeah. moved into a new oh, house. Yeah. Or if you're a realtor. 
If you're and you a want a gift, you yeah. know, gift one of your uh, harsh, 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 harsh warming. Yeah. Okay. Harsh warming. That's enough spiel. We, we've done more spiels than normal. Yeah. But we, we haven't been around for a while. Yeah. Thank you very much. We appreciate your prayers. We really Comments do. and all of your encouragement. We really do. And we have a wonderful love. audience. We really do. We do. And we it's have... very encouraging to us. And we, we thank God for the opportunity that he's thrusted us in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we wound up doing this thing. We never really thought no. we'd get this far. So no, and it's because you guys watch. So thank yeah. you. God thank bless you. So you. Much. Talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye bye.